right bgp border gateway protocol the purpose of this protocol is not for the inside networks this routing protocol is to bring the routes from outside our autonomous system not only to bring the routes from outside sometimes we may be willing to take the network advertise it to outside world so whenever you have some inside to outside and outside to inside the autonomous system we need bgp why not ospf or why not uh, cisco's eigrp now why is that bgp the reason is whenever we are talking about communicating to outside or bring the network from outside or advertising our network to outside we have policies we want to do things very careful because it is going to outside and coming from outside within the autonomous system we don't have much policy within our autonomous system we don't have much policy because it's our own networks the the destinations to reach within our autonomous system need not to go through hardening uh, tight filtration not that you know not that policy oriented even if you have policy there are simple policies which can be uh, taken care by ospf you can write some filter routes uh, that's the maximum thing you may need in a, within a within an organization you, you may like to filter some networks so ospf using distribution list i can filter it but policies in path, path selection is mostly seen between the borders whenever we have um connection to multiple autonomous system we will have a lot of policies like whether to go via this autonomous system should i come out via this autonomous system so there will be some policies involved which can be easily applied or which you know a path selection can be easily achieved as per the policy when we have bgp because bgp has got rich metrical attributes that's the specialty of this protocol this protocol has got a lot of attributes instead of metric see metric it will be based on bandwidth but your policy and bandwidth has got no connection right you you have some expectation uh, to choose one isp as a primary the other isp as the backup so your isps are your external autonomous system your neighbor autonomous system they are not within your organization isps are outside your autonomous system so you got some policies like choosing isp1 as a primary keeping isp2 as a backup or uh, sending 50 percentage of the traffic via isp1 the other 50 percentage via isp2 so these are all our policies these policies they're not related to bandwidth so you cannot use ospf which uses o which uses bandwidth to calculate the cost to decide the best path. We need a protocol that will understand our policy requirement. Only those protocol is well suited to be between the borders. And BGP is the only protocol via which you can apply the policies in path selection. And it is the attribute, the one which we use to tune the path selection in BGP. Now, 
that is not the only reason why we choose BGP. There is also another reason, very important reason. This BGP is a protocol with multiple protocols in it. What? I'm trying to put something very big in a simple way. So my words may confuse you, but I'll make it try to make it more clear. Listen, BGP is a protocol with multiple protocols in it. BGP is a protocol with many protocols in it. Meaning what? BGP has also got another name, MPBGP. MPBGP, you might have heard this word, MPBGP, multi-protocol BGP. So this protocol not only has got multiple attributes in designing the path, it also got multiple protocols in one name called BGP. For example, have you heard about VEPN? The control plane of EVPN is taken care by BGP. Have you heard about segment routing? Right. Segment routing is also possible with BGP. Well, even this layer 3 VPN Definitely you might have come across layer 3 MPLS VPN that is possible only with BGP. MPLS alone cannot provide us layer 3 VPN. So this BGP has got different uh, different features like it can have IPv6, it can have segment routing, VXLAN, VPLS. VPLS stands for Virtual Private LAN Service, which is a layer 2 VPN. You know, like this, BGP can be used for various services that you want, various features that you expect between, between autonomous system. With, with, with OSP, with EHRP, we cannot even imagine these things. BGP can do all these things. That's why BGP is needed between the borders. But sometimes you will notice BGP is enabled, it is enabled on every router within the autonomous system. But you cannot replace OSPF with BGP, even though you run BGP on every router within the autonomous system. I just finished saying BGP is between borders, but now I am saying BGP is also seen enabled on every router within the autonomous system. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. And I'm, I'm also continuing, I continued saying, even though it is running on all the router, I cannot throw the OSP which is already running within my organization. Did you understand what I said? Okay. The reason why I am saying this is, this thing I'll be repeating after a few, uh, minutes that time this if you recall it will be nice now I'm repeating again BGB is meant to be between borders because we have policy at the same time in some cases we see in order to avoid black hole in the network we enable BGP on every router within the autonomous system when the protocol that is meant to be between the borders and why we need to enable it on all the routers, 
I give you an answer to a white black hole. What it is, if you don't understand, no problem. We'll be seeing those things in, in few minutes. Now, the other question I was asking is, okay, if you're running BGP on every router within the organization, within the autonomous system, uh, can we remove OSPF, which is already running on every route? My answer will be no. You should not run OSPF, sorry, you should not remove OSPF you need to run OSPF as well as this BGP for good reason like this. BGP is bringing the network information from outside to inside. It is responsible only for those external fires. It is responsible for only those networks coming from outside and for the networks that wants to go, that, that needs to get advertised to the outside. So the role of BGP is to take care of the outside, not taking care of the inside network. So inside, for inside network, you still need the OSPF. You cannot remove OSPF, even though you may run OSPF and BGP on all the routers, within the autonomous system, the purpose of OSPF and BGP are not the same. The purpose of OSPF is for the inside networks, our own networks, best path, shortest path to reach our own network within the autonomous system. Whereas, the reason of we running BGP inside all the, all the routers is to learn those external networks on every router within the organization so that we can have route. Otherwise, there will be a black hole and packet drop will happen. So, BGP and OSPF need to coexist. Now, BGP is not needed if you don't have policy between autonomous systems. We need policy whenever we got, we will have policy whenever we got multi-homing or dual homing scenario. What does it mean? This is multi-homing scenario. See, this autonomous system is connected to more than one autonomous system. This is multi-homing scenario. What is dual homing scenario? If I have two autonomous systems connected back to back like this, you see there are two connections between same autonomous systems. Whereas here, one is going to the left-hand side ISP, the other is going to the right-hand side ISP. This we call as multi-homing. And this is dual homing. That these terminologies are important for our later classes. Multi-homing, dual homing. Dual homing, two connections to one single upstream ISP. Multi-homing, two different connections. Not to the same ISP, right? It's, it's to two different ISP. So multi-homing and dual homing scenarios, we have policy. If I have single homed, You see, here there is no policy involved. For this autonomous system, for this autonomous system, whether you like or not, this is the only, only option to reach the network. What policy to have here? No. 
There's no policy if I have only single haunt. There is no policy. You cannot, you don't have a choice. But when we have a multi home, or just a dual homing, you may have an an option, an expectation, a policy saying all the time sensitive traffic like multicasting, multicast traffic like UDP traffic will go via this link. Rest of the traffic to go via this link. Or we may have like all the branch office, home office, all the all the local and remote office communication goes through this link. Other link, other, other traffic that goes to the internet will go via the other link. What it is? It's what policy. It's what policy. So whenever we have dual homing or multi homing, we'll have policy. Only when we have policy, we need BGP. So if we are having single home network, sorry, if you're having single home the network, there is no need for BGP. There's no need for BGP if you are having single home. Dual home and multi home have got policies because you got you got a you got an option to choose this or that or both with some load sharing, something like that, then only we need BGP. So what is multi-homing? Connecting to two or more ISPs. Why do you connect to two or more ISP? So that I can have reliability means even if the connection to one ISP goes down, even if connection to one ISP goes down, I'll still have the internet connection through the other ISPs. So to, to, to provide reliability, we need two or more ISPs. Secondly, to improve the performance. How? For some destination, going where ISPv1 may be better, easy to reach, than going where ISP2. So you can you can choose one ISP which is having a better path. When I say better path, it may be a more bandwidth or um, less number of autonomous system jump, something like that. So if you have multi-homing, you have an option to compare two paths and choose the best. So for some network, path one may be best, for some destination, path two may be best. In that way, we can improve the performance in path selection in taking the path. Whenever we have multi-homing scenario, this is how we uh, decide the path. Sometimes we decide to go via B, not via A, sorry, not via D, we decide to go via E. The reason is uh, both D and E provides default route. They just provide us default route. And you don't know whether this network is available in a short distance via ISP E or ISP D. You just go default route and you use one as the primary and another one as a policy. Not much, not a big policy here. One you use as a primary, the other you use as a backup because they both advertise the same default route. This is one way in which we approach the provider to get service from them. Secondly, we learn partial routing table, 
meaning for some destinations for for sorry for some well known destinations for some well known destinations what is well known destinations destinations like your branch office you have learned a clear route into the routing table from the isp isp provides a detailed route information for the rest we use the default route so this is another option the first one we learn the default route and we choose one isp as a primary and the rest as a back secondly we learn partial routing table from the isp partial routes isp may be having thousands of network destination routes not all of them but some of them which are frequently visited by us for the rest we receive a default route here they are saying like um 10000 prefixes you see 10000 prefixes not the complete routing table they may have millions of routes in the routing table in x and y but only 10000 prefixes from x and y we learn for all the rest we use a default route provided by isp this is also another way of relationship the type of relationship uh, enterprises will have with isp thirdly the complete routing table is given to us by isp a and isp b complete routing table and now because you got the complete routing table our routers a b c and d can do more granular look up and design on best path for each destination but for this you know this enterprises need to have really a very big routers a b c and d if they are simple enterprises routers they cannot really hold that big routing table of isps because they they're not that big i isp routers are very big but those routers that we have in our enterprises are not that big if we have something like big asr devices and it's okay cool so this is another type of relationship that we have with service provider learning complete route from the routing table the previous one was learning partial route from the routing table for the rest the default route is given and then before one we just learn only the default route and we use one isp as a primary the other isp as the backup so these are all the ways in these are all the different ways that we can have routes from the customer when we are having multi homing next to understand about bgp uh, we need to know what is autonomous system definitely you know what is autonomous system is nothing but an enterprises an organization so the routers in an organization work for that company for that organization not for other organizations. so it's one autonomous system we call autonomous system because the those routers they have one common policy because all the routers belong to that company it works for that company and all the routers must have same policy they will definitely have one, one common policy that is why we call it as autonomous system so in another word the routers that needs similar service 
they're all grouped together as an autonomous system. In another word, the collection of networks that are taken care by single technical administration. That's autonomous system, collection of networks under single technical administration. One enterprises is one autonomous system. One ISP is also an autonomous system. Fine, this one is very general. What is IBGP? Sorry, what is IGP and what is BGP? IGP is the protocol, interior gate protocol. The, their job is to find the best path for those networks that are within the autonomous system. IGP protocols operates within the autonomous system. IGP's job is to find the best path for networks that are within the same autonomous system. Whereas BGP is to find the best path for those, ne those networks that are outside the autonomous system. IGP is a protocol that works between autonomous system. IGP is a protocol that works inside the autonomous system. Both BGP and IGP protocols, they all guarantee, they all exchange routes which are 100% glue free. Unless when we mess with the configuration, every protocol, every routing protocol is designed to exchange loop-free route information. For example, if you take OSPF, OSPF guarantees this loop-free routing information exchange with router IDs. When routes are advertised, router ID also get advertised. As a result, loop can be prevented. Say for example, I'm sending a letter with my signature. So now this letter is circulated to everyone. Someone gives me a letter. When I see the letter, I don't take it. You know why? Because it's my own letter. They are thinking that I'm someone else, but I'm the author of the letter. I wrote this letter for others, not for me. My name, my seal is there. So when I see, a letter coming to me, I see whether my name is available there. If it is there, I reject that letter. In that way, I prevent loop. <coughs> OSP uses route ID to prevent loop. Likewise, EIGRP uses a composite value that satisfies the feasibility condition. By doing so, EAGRP can provide you a loop-free, classless route information. RIP uses split horizon to prevent loop. RIP also have got Infinite metric called uh, hop 16 to prevent loop. BGP has also got a mechanism to prevent loop. You know what it is? AS path. Between EBGP neighbor, the autonomous system number helps to prevent loop. Say for example, 
if I'm having a network to advertise here, alpha, 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 I advertise like this, advertisement goes like this, and C advertises here back. If it advertises back, E will not take it. You know why? E can find his own autonomous system number as the source of this update. When E receives it, it can find its own autonomous system number in the update, in the route update. And E understands that it's my own, I should not take. This is how autonomous system number is used in preventing loop. Do you have any question in this? How AS number prevents loop? Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. You know, your question is absolutely uh, right. Very, I, I understood your question in the beginning itself, but I was, I was, uh, I was trying to see um, your more info from your question. But anyway, I got your question very well. Uh, it has got uh, answer as yes and no. You will you will understand those things very shortly. But I want to give you one answer for your level of understanding uh, to answer this question uh, this is how it is when D receives this one dot one dot one dot one it will receive saying I receive this one dot one dot one dot one as you said I receive it from autonomous system six five two zero it will also have six five zero 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 so when D receives the update, it has got the AS path attribute also attached with it. AS path is an attribute. AS path, there, there are many attributes which comes along with the route. AS path is also one of the attribute. So D now, knows that 1111 even though i'm receiving it from 64520 this is not the owner autonomous system the owner is this one 65000 the last one hmm. Right. Nice question. So, within the IBGP, how the loop is prevented? That's what your question is. Between EBGP, we have autonomous system number, so you know uh, the autonomous system number from where it originated, 
if you find your own autonomous system as the originating autonomous system, you prevent the loop by ignoring those updates. Now, how this will work if it is within the autonomous system? Because sometime before I said, we also enable BGP on every router within the autonomous system in order to learn <clears throat> the external routes to avoid black hole. I said that in such scenario, how <clears throat> BGP helps to identify loop and avoid loop. That is your question. Their router ID will come into picture. <clears throat> Like OSPF, BGP also picks up Lubeck interface IP address as a router ID. So within the autonomous system, you got router ID to identify from whom this is coming to me. Not only that, there is also BGP split horizon rule, not simple split horizon rule, BGP split horizon rule, which says route that you learn from one IBGP should not be given to another should not be given to another IBGP. If it is given, it will cause loop. So the, there is a rule not to advertise to another IBGP, this prevents loop. How? It's coming later. So, answer to your question is, it is the router ID that is used within the autonomous system to prevent loop, to identify that there are chances of loop and to prevent them. But between the autonomous system, <clears throat> between the autonomous system, it is the autonomous system number. Now let's move on to the next one. You see, you already know this. You already know this. Your question was also very clear. You had this in your mind, but still to confirm, you asked this question. Um, this autonomous system 64512 is learning these networks which is originated from 64700. So when you received this three network on the router in this autonomous system, you see the autonomous system path through which the advertisement has come here. You can see that your router here learns the route from 520, which is this one. That learned the route from 600, which is this one. And 600 learned from 700, which is this one. So it clearly shows the AS path through which the route has reached here. <clears throat> so BGP is called as path vector routing protocol. It shows the autonomous system path via which the routes have come here. So using these routes, the packet will go this way, but not this way. Because you have not learned route this way, no? And how you can go this way? So you know very well, sitting in this router, you can say, my path goes this way, very clearly. You know it because you see, you see the AS path the autonomous system path through which you received this update. There may be multiple paths, but this is the only path through which the advertisement come to you. We use it. Sometimes we'll be learning from all the paths. If I'm connected like this, I'll be learning out from here as well as here. But there are attributes running here which chooses this one and ignores this one. That's the reason why, you know, when this advertises, it was not talking about 540. 
it was only talking about 600 to 512. Did you understand what I said now? All right. So, but quickly, let me repeat. See, this router, this autonomous system routers learn from two different sources. And for some reason, they ignore this because they did not meet the policy. Even though these routes are coming like this, it, it has ignored it. But it has taken this, just taken this path. So, 6520 will advertise only the elected path to 6512. And also 6512 has got no visibility. That was a nice word that he used some time back. 6512 has got no visibility to this. 64520 uh, has got visibility to both. But because this didn't satisfy the feasibility condition, sorry, sorry, not feasibility condition. Feasibility condition is not the term in BGP. Because this didn't satisfy the policy, Attribute has filtered out this route and it has, it has elected only this path as the best path. So only the best path can be advertised to the uh, upstream. Right. So BGP here, in, what is the takeaway in this pages? BGP's job is to announce or advertise the network reachability for those networks that are from another autonomous system. And this path selection is based on the attribute. Whereas IGP announces the network for those networks that are within the organization and metric is what used to select the best path, not the attribute. So BGP allows the administrator to define the policy. That's the basic, this is the reason why we need BGP. It allows the administrator to define the policy of how the packet should flow through the autonomous systems. Many autonomous systems are there. Which path should be taken? In our example on the picture on top, it goes by the upper path. OSPF is not like this. OSPF is not working in between autonomous system. It is just within the autonomous system. They can provide only the best path to reach some destination within the network, within the autonomous system. Within the autonomous system, not between the autonomous systems, not through the autonomous systems. BGP is a path vector. See, BGP is same like, I, I really don't like to say this word, but uh, many use this word, so let me also repeat this. BGP is also like a distance vector routing protocol. In what way? BGP, 50% uh, of the time, not a whole, most of the time, 50% of the time, BGP will select a path based on the number of hops. Yeah, you, you said very right, AS hops, AS hops. So here, one hop is an autonomous system. The path which has got less number of AS jumps are considered as the best path. In that way, BGP is like a distance vector protocol. One hop is one autonomous system. So it is AS by AS routing protocol. What does this mean? AS by AS routing protocol. Sometime back you asked me a question. I was, I was just you know, listening to the question because your words meant this also, which I'm going to say. Your words was your words that you used to explain the question was sounding like this. 
AS by AS. You didn't use the word AS by AS, but you are trying to mean AS by AS, meaning you are using the router names. You said D will use the identification of A and A will use identification of B. That is true. For A, the next stop IP address will be B. For D, the next stop IP address will be A. No doubt in it. But if this autonomous system, if it is like this, you got another router here, and this connection goes here. We don't have a connection here. This connection goes here, and this is connected here. Now, what will be the next stop IP address on A? It won't be IP address of this router, X. It won't be X. It will be B. So I was I was just looking for this this question, but you didn't ask this question. Anyway, don't worry about this. Even if you didn't get it now, uh, we will see in a bigger picture in a different topology. We need a nice topology. Long way to go. So BGP is an autonomous system, an autonomous system routing protocol. Here, every hop is one autonomous system. That you will understand better the meaning of this an autonomous system by autonomous system routing protocol. You will understand this better when we learn BGP's next hop behavior. BGP's next hop behavior when a route is advertised to an EBGP like this like this when a route is advertised to an EBGP A and D has got EBGP relationship as you said D will have A's address as the next stop very correct but when a route is advertised to an IBGP which I was trying to draw and explain when a route is advertised to an IBGP you don't have this connection between X and Y. What do you have? IBGP. When a route is advertised to IBGP, the next stop advertised by EBGP will be carried into IBGP. The next stop advertised, meaning the next stop of A will be B, not X. Even though X is giving you the route, the next stop address will be B, not X. That is why I said BGP is AS by AS routing protocol, not router by router. Here, every hop is one autonomous system. So it cannot show you X IP address. It will show you only B's IP address. Now, I have conveyed the complete meaning of what is AS by AS routing protocol, but this will repeat again when we learn next stop behavior in BGP. It comes later. Now, in this scenario, what sorry, in this page, what we learn is who or where BGP is more appropriate, most appropriate. BGP is most appropriate when at least one of the following condition exists. And AS allows the packet to transit. For example, service providers. We customers, we send traffic to service provider, but our final destination is not, it is not service provider. Our final destination is somewhere in the remote autonomous system. Yeah, our final destination is somewhere in the remote autonomous system, but to reach that remote autonomous system, we use ISP. So ISP will have policy in allowing our 
traffic. ISP will have policy in allowing our accepting our packet because the packet don't go to ISP. The packet goes through ISP to reach someone. ISP is used simply as a transit. We need VGP there. Wherever there is a policy, wherever there is there is multi-home connection. Whenever we have an autonomous system used as a transit, there will be BGP. There is need for a BGP. Now, the next three reason bottom says where BGP is not appropriate. As I said earlier, if you are having single connection to the internet, means single home, you don't need BGP because you don't have options. You don't have any uh, policies to choose a path and ignore the other one. You have what? You got only one path. When we have only one path, what policy to have? No policy. Only when I have two paths, I can say I prefer this path. Only if this is down, I want to use the other path. So single connection to the internet. Next, limited understanding on route filtering and BGB path selection. Repeating again, limited understanding. Meaning, I know to I know to enable BGP. I have configured BGP. I know how to enable BGP. That is not enough. We should know how these attributes of BGP behaves so that we can go and tune those attributes and apply our policies in the path selection. Only then we can use BGP. Otherwise, it's a waste of uh, running BGP. BGP consumes more, more processor than any other routing protocol. Why? BGP not simply advertises a network and a metric. BGP advertises network and Big, big, big bulk of attributes with it. Big, big amount of information called attributes with each network. It is not simple uh, route update. It's a huge route update. So even the bandwidth and processors are going to be consumed a lot. So if you don't know how to use this BGP effectively, then better not to go for it because that is going to increase your CPU and bandwidth. So limited understanding of route filtering and BGP path selection, not always appreciated to have BGP. Next, lack of memory or processor power. You don't have much RAM or CPU to handle such a huge update, a big update that comes from BGP neighbors, right? So if you don't have the big processor and big uh, memory, then it is not recommended to use BGP. I said BGP is a path vector routing protocol. I also use this word, it's a distance vector protocol. Here also the presentation uses the same thing. The enhancement is done over the distance vector protocol. Enhancement. Meaning here every hop is every every hop is one autonomous system. That's the enhancement here. So <clears throat> BGP is a path vector routing protocol. Each hop is an autonomous system. And BGP uses TCP. By the way, which layer BGP works in OSI? Application layer. Layer 7. Layer 7. BGP is an application layer protocol. BGP is an application layer protocol. See, Telnet also uses TCP. Will you call Telnet as layer 4? HTTP also uses TCP. 
Il est quand le HTTP layer for, you know. Based on the application, the port numbers are decided. Here the application is BGP. So BGP is a service. So it uses reliable connection oriented transportation TCP to identify this BGP service the number number allocated is 179 BGP has TCP 179 as the service number that's how BGP services are identified like we identify telnet with 23 179 is what for BGP BGP is an application layer protocol. Next, BGP will not send any periodic update. Only when there is a change, the change will be advertised as an incremental and triggered update. Immediately update will come and only the changes will come. And BGP sends key palai messages every 60 seconds to check whether the peer is still up or gone down keep alive or tcb based keep alive tc keep alive means it's always point to point not a multi point not a multi not not multi, not multicast it's always unicast so keep alive or send as a TCP sync packet every 60 seconds. And BGP picks a path <clears throat> not based on bandwidth or uh, delay, but based on the attributes. So we call it as rich metric. BGP is called rich metric, not simply based on one small uh, metric like delay or bandwidth now as we already spoke in the beginning in the introduction bgp is designed to support the internet documents like policy based path selection bgp is the internet protocol bgp has got different types of database one is neighbor table which will have the list of BGP neighbors. The com most of the time we use, we use the command show IP BGP summary to see this table. And then BGP's forwarding table, which we call it as uh, BGP table. The command is show IP BGP, where we see the row, those routes that are received from other autonomous system and those routes that we advertise to the other autonomous system. Both receive and sent autonomous systems, advertised autonomous systems are shown in this table with attributes for each destination. Next is the routing table that will have only the best route to the destination. Now last page, sorry for little time extension. BGP has got different message types. Open message, this is the very first packet after the three-way handshake between two BGP peer. Again, repeating, TCP is what BGP uses. So any TCP protocol, not only BGP, any TCP protocol, first thing what it will do is it will do three-way handshake. Only when it is, when three-way handshake is successful, it will start doing its own negotiation. If it is Telnet, Telnet negotiation. Here, BGP will send its very first packet called open packet after the three-way handshake. And this open packet will, will contain uh, the router ID, the whole time. These are two important things, and there are a few more things. But when we do the lab in our next class, our, we'll just enable BGP between two routers and we'll capture the packet and we'll see deep dive into these packets. I'll show you the open message, update packet, keep alive messages. So keep alive is just for uh, pinging. Hello, saying hello every 60 seconds. Update is whenever there is a change in the path selection because of attribute change, we receive update. 
notification is only when there is an error only when there is a break in the path so notification will be sent so these are the different types of messages so in this chapter what we learned is we learned why and where we enable BGP and what is BGP next we learned when when we answer the question why BGP we learned that multi homing is the reason or dual homing is the reason uh, so whenever we have dual homing or multi homing we have different ways in learning routes one is learning the default route other one is the partial route and the third one is the complete routing tip then we learned like We learn like BGP is a path vector routing protocol. Uh, it uses AS number to prevent loop. And within the autonomous system, it uses route ID to prevent loop. We saw different types of uh, table like uh, neighbor table, uh, BGP table, and the routing table. And we also saw different type of message shared between BGP peers. One is open message, which is the very first packet after the three-way handshake open message carries the router id and the hold time keep alive is a heartbeat sent every 60 second updates carry the uh, destination info as well as the attribute attached to those destinations notification is sent whenever there is an error in reaching some network right so we have come to the end of this chapter in the next before we move to the next chapter we'll, we'll have a small demo we'll capture a, using wireshark and we'll see these packets deep dive and then we'll take it from there thanks for joining see you tomorrow